Hey y'all, this is AL Thick with Dom, and this is the recap review for Ready to Love's first episode of the reunion special. Okay, so uh, first of all, Tommy is not there because he tested positive for COVID. So just to be on the safe side, despite the fact that he feels fine and that he feels great, he had somebody else to come in who is a DC or DMV native. And I think her name is Tanika Ray. I hadn't seen her in years. I live for her. I live for her hair. I always have. It is what it is. So, uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, before I get all the way started, I just want to let y'all know that I have an alkaline smoothie on deck. So and y'all, when y'all see me sipping, that's what I'm sipping on. This is what it looked like. It's a little dark, um, has a darkish tint because of the strawberries. Okay, this is what's in it. Spring water, strawberries, um, peaches, and mangoes. And as the sweetener, as I've told y'all before, I like adding dates. I had whole dates that I pitted, so that's why it's a darker, uh, a couple of darker shades than it would have normally been had I not sweetened it with the dates. So that's what I'm drinking on. And it's delicious. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into this foolishness. So, <laughs> everyone but I think Shiloh is there. Um, but they started out with Sean. Y'all know that Sean was one of the people who came in late in the game that they threw in as a curveball. It was he and Sydney. But they started out with Sean. So, they, of course, did a little replay of what we saw throughout the season with him when he did get added and how everything went with his connections and when he ultimately was told that he wasn't ready to love. So, this man, <laughs> as soon as this man said the Negro Inquisition, I was like, wait, <laughs> wait a minute, I cannot. Like, every, like, Frank was looking like, <laughs> I was like, wait. Um, he felt some type of way when he was confronted by one of the ladies who he had been trying to, you know, get to know their friends. And it was just, it was a lot for him. I was just like, not the Negro Inquisition, no, sir. But yeah, he, you know, he made it seem like he was there for the process. But at the same time, he didn't want to sit up there and just say, okay, I'm here. But let me just act like I'm here for whoever is here for me. And let me just act like I'm here for all of what's going on instead of really being truthful and honest with myself about what I want despite the fact that my heart is open I am here and I'm ready to love so yeah um he had a couple of connections he had a couple of connections and I think Sabrina was the person her friends um who he was referring to when he was talking about the Negro Inquisition but yeah it was just a lot but his situation didn't work out and it was what it was so then they ended up showing Phil Child, I, I, I don't understand. I really don't understand how he was able to stay on this show. I really don't. And um, they showed Phil, but they ended up showing Sydney. And I guess because they came late in the game, you know, they were showing her connection with him. And then they started talking after they showed the fast, the, 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 um, uh, the flashback. I don't know why I said fast forward. That's what I was wanting to say. But yeah, they showed the flashback. And they wanted to know what it was about Sydney versus all the other people because he had quite a few connections. And he was talking about their conversation was different and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, I guess it was something we weren't seeing, child, because I don't understand what different was happening. I just feel like I just feel like they were just looking at each other and he was like, she fine. And, you know, she fine and all the other people that I didn't, you know, dealt with on here, I'm here for it. And let's see where it goes. Like she seemed like she might be a firecracker and she's a party girl too. She likes being out on the club scene, the night scene. Oh, okay. Child, I don't know. I don't really see it. And like I have said over and over again, I feel as though Phil is one of those people who was not there and ready to love. I feel like he was there ready to have sex with some people <clears throat> that's not being ready to love. Sorry, that's just not what I'm seeing. So they did a little set change <clears throat> with the uh, actual cast. 
Child, they had Camille and Cornelius up there and some other people or whatever, but they showed what we saw all throughout the season before Cornelius was booted and she decided to self-eliminate. And I just cannot. Like, I cannot with her. I really cannot. I'm just like, why would you do this? Why would you do this? Why would you do this? Uh, they wanted to know whether or not they moved in with one another and they're looking like, what? No. He's talking about it's a slow process. And I'm like, child, this helper came off the rip to my son. Cornelius, that's, that's my boyfriend. We're getting married and all this other stuff. We're going to have babies. We're going to do all of this. And he was still trying to figure out who he wanted to even deal with on the show. And I'm like, this helper crazy. Do you? I mean, my thing is this. I can. I would have been able to easily be like, okay, I can see your point, Helfer. If only the women or some of the women were saying what has been said about her. But the men and the women, collectively, every single last one of them have been like, uh, this Helfer crazy. Cornelius, blink two times if you need help. Sir, let us know what's going on. This Helfer got him on lock. He can't even try to talk to nobody. She got angry when she found out that he was trying to pursue other people, all of this. And I'm just like, you still trying to deal with this hell for why? I don't under, I don't understand because he had a great connection with, I think her name was Courtney. He had a great connection with her and she explained at some point that she is the type of woman who goes after a man. So when we saw her, you know, show that she was interested in him by touching him and you know, all of that. And they seemed cozy until Camille would come around and be like, mm, I don't like that. What's going on here? Child, I, he really sitting up there with this helper. Like, I guess they're supposed to be coordinated or something. I'm not here for that uniform. Y'all say uniform. I'm not here for that outfit that he got on. I'm not here for it. I don't know if it's the color. Even though I love that color, that is my alma mater's color, child. It ain't even got nothing to do with that. Really, I just feel like it should have been like two or three colors or something because it was just too much of that going on. Maybe, I, I mean, I already done told y'all. Y'all know I am not a fashionista. Y'all already know I ain't nobody. But I'm just saying, it, it, it was just doing a lot. I was just not here for that. It wasn't even the make of what he had on. It was just that one solid color. That particular color, I think, is what it did it for me. And I was like, mm-mm, mm-mm. But yeah, uh, while everything was being said, Sabrina was not here for it. And you could tell. <laughs> so Tanika wanted to know like, what she thought about it. And she was like, I don't care. They don't pay my rent. They don't pay none of my car notes. They can do what they do. But it's obvious that everybody is just like, girl, this is a foolishness. Like, don't nobody care. And I was like, I know that's right, uh, Sabrina. But at the same time, <clears throat> it's just like, girl, just stop. So they did another little, little thing where, child, my mom and them calling me. I was going to call them after I was done doing this video. Anyway, so, you know, they have other people on there now, and they're talking to them. And I'm like, child, I think they got, um, what's this man's name? Uh, 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 um. Uh, why I can't think of his name? I'm looking right at his face, child. They ended up eliminating him, and I was like, hallelujah. Like, I cannot. Tyrone, is that his name? Child, I don't understand how he was able to get on this show. I'm sorry. I just don't. I don't understand. But anyway, uh, they're going to come back to Cornelius and Camille. So they already know that there was a whole lot of stuff going on with that situation. So we're going to come back to that. So, like I said, Shiloh wasn't there. He lived for Shiloh and all this other stuff. Child, the fact that he was over here talking about all of these, like three, three percent. Okay, I can't even say it because it's so ridiculous. There were three women that he mentioned that people who were in the back, watching from the back, in a green room or whatever you want to say it was, and the people who were on the stage were all like, uh-uh, like you do it too much. Like people were dying laughing because it's like, sir, sir, uh, y'all remember that part that happened when he was just like, oh, I can't juggle all these people at one time or whatever. It's just a lot going on. And he said he felt like one woman could be his woman. One woman could be his lady and the other person he could marry. Everybody was just like, <laughs> you don't get somewhere to sit 
down. Ciao. I can't. I ain't never been here for him. I can't. Like, it's I don't it's his personality and just the way he is as a person, the way he operates. This was not the show for him at all in any capacity. I don't understand how he was able to get one here. I guess it's because he has a way with words. Um, there have been other platforms that he's gone on because I have gone, I have gone on, I think it was the little, is it called Little Black Book? I saw when uh, he did an interview with him and it was a mess. But anyway, ain't much to talk about as far as Tyrone is concerned. So anyway, uh, they went back into Cornelius again, child. I told y'all that was going to come back. They was going to come back to him. So they wanted to know whether or not they have watched the show together before. And they told us, oh, yeah, once or twice. Like, it's been cool or whatever. And so they wanted to know how he felt and, like, how everything went whenever there was a conversation about um, the other ladies that he might have been interested in. And he was like, oh, it was definitely a conversation to have. I'm like, child, what no conversation. This heifer told you you can't deal with nobody. And you were like, okay, and didn't. And that's why they booted you, because nobody got a chance to know you. We are not going to lie. And like I already told y'all, Courtney already said that she wanted to try to pursue him because she saw something that she liked. It was what it was. And she does not mind pursuing guys. And that's the way she is. And other women started chiming in because they said that she was being aggressive. Um, I know at one point in time earlier in the episode, they discussed the word aggressive because... Um, a man said something about a black woman being aggressive, but the way that it, uh, uh, Tyrone, Tyrone says something about aggressive. Uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, he's the one who brought up aggressive saying that people were aggressive or something like that. One of the men said it. And so now it's coming back again. So Camille is sitting there like aggressive, aggressive. I thought we already discussed this word. I already discussed this word. And I think it's Aisha. Aisha is, is in the middle of talking because it's like, there, everybody is going around the room like, okay, we didn't get a chance to get to know him. Like, there were some people who were just like, um, I wasn't interested in him, in him at all because he ain't, he wasn't romantic to me. Like, he was just not it for me anyway. But most of the ladies who wanted to possibly get to know him didn't get a chance because he was wrapped around her thumb. And I don't understand what that was about. I don't understand what he was wrapped around her pinky thumb, big toe, pinky toe. I don't understand what it was about. Like, the heifer was clearly showing signs of being a psycho, being crazy, being possessive, doing the absolute most. The faces that she makes, like I understand that there are some people who make faces, but she just be doing the absolute most. She's one of those people, she ain't gonna be able to be able to even practice how to have a poker face. And she's even trying to attribute that to, oh, I was in theater. There are a lot of people who've been in theater and they know how to not do the absolute most like that when you were supposed to be being serious and you were supposed to be acting sane. Um, there was a scene that we didn't see that I forgot to mention earlier because I, she just be getting on my nerves and I be forgetting stuff where um, she had gone out, I guess, on a date, a one-on-one -on -one date with Dante. And this heifer said something about being at a pool party and that he already met two other people and gave them names. And I was just like, what? And like, he wanted to know if she was serious. She talking about she was serious and said it's three of them. Oh, it's just three of us. It's just three personalities. That's it. So when all of that cut and they came back to the show that's actually on right now, she talking about, oh, well, I've gone to therapy and I worked that out and I prayed it away and it's only me now. It's just me. And I'm like, girl. And then like she tried to playfully say that, you know, when she takes her meds, she's okay. And then she tried to say, oh, no, I don't take meds. Girl, you need to if you don't. Something is not, there is something amiss. There is some kind of a chemical imbalance, craziness, just willful craziness. Something is going on that needs to be addressed, like for real. If you really are going to therapy, hopefully they have seen you on this show in the way that you have presented yourself to everyone and the way that you acted over Cornelius. So that they can accurately say to you, look, this is behavior that you should not be exhibiting. Let me diagnose you. Like, and I mean, in all honesty, I really don't want to say anything about giving anybody medication. Because there are so, I feel like there are so many ways that people can actually 
you know, get over things and have natural remedies and just certain breathing exercises, meditation. I'm not going to sit up here also in the same breath and try to say, yeah, don't get these people medicine, but because there are people who really do need it because they are that bad off because a simple meditation and all of that and having somebody on hand to try to diffuse what's going on in your mind and all of that, it's not going to be enough. It's going to be a 100% full-time job. Sometimes several people would need to come in because that one person would be drained and ready to off themselves if they had to deal with some of the things that I've actually seen when I was out there in the trenches, if you will. Those of y'all who know, know. But anyway, <clears throat> this heifer has issues. It's clear. Everybody else has seen it. And as I've already said before, the people was tired. So Aisha was, was, was talking to this heifer. And, you know, basically she was talking to Tanika. But it's like, girl, you're not giving anybody a chance to know him. Nobody can get to know him. And they did play a clip where she said that she would F everybody up. Then she tried to say, I don't know what y'all are talking about. I never said that. What are y'all talking about? I'm like, ma'am, the clip just played. You just saw the clip. So <laughs> they literally had to play the clip back. Like there was a, a full on clip of her saying over and over again, five, seven, 10, 12 times in a row, I will F y'all up. I will F y'all up. Like, don't try to talk to him. If any of y'all try to talk to him, I will F y'all up. Like literally setting it off doing the absolute most. And, like, I'm glad that somebody said it. One of the men was like, look, this heifer marked him. Like, off rip, she was like, this is going to be mine. It is what it is. She did mark him. And I'm, I'm still not understanding what it is about her that's making him not understand that he cheated him on his own self out of possible relationships that he could have had to choose from that weren't going to be as problematic as she is. I don't care what nobody say, this heifer crazy. This heifer is crazy right now. Crazy right now. They was reading, they was slick reading uh, Walter because they tell me what he looked like. <laughs> he looked like a vase. He looked like some random furniture. Like I, I really didn't even pay attention that he was there until they said something. But yeah, uh, it's just a mess. It's a mess. And then they brought up the, the brown blood, brown girls squad and all that crap. Zadia over here lied to us. No, it wasn't what y'all were trying to make it out to be. It's like, girl, it's the lies for me. Later on, they played the clip where they exclusively explained what that meant. Because when they tried to say all of what it was, I'm like, oh, so y'all are not going to include Aisha in it. Even though she is clearly darker than some of the other ladies because when they actually went over it and did the back background and breakdown of it, they were like, oh, okay, basically she's not black enough. Her skin isn't dark enough. Sabrina's is too light. You know, I'm just like, child, y'all hit that right there. Y'all hit the nail right on the head with that because I was like, ooh, y'all should have did that. I, I hate that and I hate when people do that. They really sit up there and be like, okay, so y'all light. And y'all dark. Why are we doing the brown paper bag test? I really hate this modern day brown paper bag test foolishness that be going on. And I feel like it's something that will never end. Like there are clearly people who are in the entertainment industry. Like there are people who like sing or rap. And because they light skin, they'll get a better chance and, and take off a whole lot faster than a lot of these dark skinned people. And I ain't here for it. Like it's some people right now I can name off right now. If you put their music up against these other random heifers music, the, 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 the light-skinned heifer in a lot of the cases are mediocre versus, I'm talking about the ones who are slightly being lived for or lived for in a way. And I'm just like, this person is a one-hit wonder and y'all living for them versus somebody who is so versatile that I would sit there and listen to cover songs all day versus this heifer songs that she is creating off the top of her head that ain't even worth mentioning. But go off though. So anyway, child, it was just a mess. Um, it actually was supposed to be a segment about Cornelius. And it got to the point where he had looked over at Camille and was like, I thought this was my segment. And he laughed. And I'm like, child, y'all, here come the foolishness, y'all. Right, let, let me take a sip because mm -mm. at this point, let me drink the rest of it because mm -mm. They got to Frank and Mumin. 
they showed their little story that we saw as the season progressed. Child, they wanted to know how they were doing. So then Frank going to say, be honest, because she was sitting there like, the relationship has gone absolutely nowhere since that day. And it does not make sense at all. And I'm like, what is going on? What you mean? What you talking about? There's been no communication. There's been nothing. What you talking about, Willis? What? I'm confused. So he going to explain himself talking about, well, you know, once the cameras cut for the season, I just needed to collect myself and I needed to just have personal time for myself and I needed to regroup because I don't typically like my relationships to be on display like that. Sir, I understand that you want to protect the relationship that you're in and all that, but you signed up to be on Ready to Love, which is a nationally syndicated television show. Why would you sit up here and say that knowing what the situation was going to be? You knew off rip what it was going to be if they chose you to be on this show. Mumin's sitting up there looking disappointed and I'm just tired. I, I, I really was just like, none of what you were talking about makes sense. To me overall, like I told y'all before, I really feel like people sat up there and wanted to try to play Mumin to the left and it was kind of like, all right. She the one who I can see myself marrying, but this ain't the one who I see myself really being with like that. So I will kind of settle for her, which I don't like because it's not like she's an ugly girl. She doesn't come across as if she is anything remotely close to a Camille or a Zadia in personality and all of that. So it's like, child, it... He over here talking about he had moments where he felt like they were too close too soon. And she was like, I don't understand how. We barely spent any time together. What are you talking about? Especially after the cameras cut. Like, you ain't making sense. It didn't make sense. Like, everybody is looking confused. Like, what you talking about? Like, what are you talking about? How is any of this becoming too much when we haven't even been around each other? And in her, in her mind, now she feels like, dang, I should have listened to the ladies. There were women who were saying certain things about you. And because I was feeling you, I said to myself, you know what? Maybe what they're saying is not true. I'm going to believe otherwise. Like, that was crazy. And I mean, Mumi started crying and everything. I was just like, child, this is some foolishness. Because she really thought that she was going to be with somebody and all of that. But this man probably wanted um, <clears throat> Sydney because she out here, she out here in these streets doing what she do. And she a little party girl and all of that, I guess, or whatever. And I mean, that it, 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 I mean, I ain't trying to say that as if it's something wrong with it. I'm just saying, if you're ready to love, don't sit up here and live for somebody just because you feel like they better than the next heifer. Like, really look deeper. It's more than what is on the surface. That's the problem with a lot of these people that be on shows like this. They be looking at the surface and be like, ooh, I'm living for the surface. I'm living for the surface. So then anyway, they went back to the whole brown girl squad situation again and how that whole situation unfolded. Child, tell me why Naeem tried to come out of nowhere. This was the loudest this man ever spoke on this show. He over here trying to defend, to defend Zadia. We looking like, what did you talk? He trying to make it seem like the ladies was jealous and they hating and all of this because of what she looked like. And we was like, what is you talking about? This show is called Ready to Love. Nobody cared about that. A person could be beautiful all day, but if your personality trash, what you talking by? What you talking by? Child, like he got, he was so loud and wrong that I just cannot. <laughs> I, I don't understand. And then, like, he brought up something to my some. Oh, well, when we were in deliberation, like, there were eight, eight out of nine guys or something like that who wanted her. And the women were like, okay, we weren't privy to what was happening in deliberations with y'all. So what does that have to do with that? One has nothing to do with the other. Her personality is trash. <laughs> her personality is trash. And they were like, he was just, he really was trying to make it seem like friendships needed to happen and all this other stuff. And people were like, look, 
We ain't here to make friends. It ain't got nothing to do with that. One one person was like, look, this heifer, at first I liked her, but then I started to see how her personality was trash. Child, I don't understand why Naeem was here either. As I have already told y'all before, he was not there. Nobody cared about him being on that show. Nobody was checking for him. Zadia was pushed to the side by somebody who she thought she was going to live for. And then he was there looking like a lost puppy. And so she just picked him up and was like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'll give him a chance to see living for me a little bit. That's all that was. Nobody was here for you, Naeem. Nobody was here for y'all. Nobody said what I said. And I could not even believe how he came out of nowhere. I was like, child, you was loud and wrong. You were loud and wrong. So anyway, now we at the end of the episode and Tasia is there. But... So much catty foolishness was going on that Tasia got up because she was just like, look, I ain't got time for this. My mama in the hospital sick. This is ghetto and all of this. Like, she going off. But we, of course, we see her in the previews for next time and she's going to be there. But she is very upset. I don't know what's going on with her mama health-wise or whatever. But she said her mama in the hospital and she could have been at the hospital. And this is just too much stupidity going on. But anyway, that was a recap review. It was some foolish and nasty. Especially when it came to Camille and Cornelius. Cornelius, if you're out there and you just so happen to come across my video, please understand that there is better out there for you. Please listen to the people who have been trying to warn you this entire time. The castmates, there have been other people who have been doing videos on this. Like, you talk about red flags. That heifer is a red flag. And then some her whole, just looking at her face is a whole, she's just a whole red flag. When you see her face, you should see a red flag. I'm just saying. But anyway, y'all, thank y'all for tuning in. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not done so. Um, <laughs> give this video a thumbs up. And let's talk about this foolishness down in the comment section. Child, this is some straight up foolishness. I just... I halfway didn't even want to come on here and do this because I was just like, uh uh, this is some foolish mess. It really is. But anyway, y'all have a good one. I'll see y'all later on. Be safe out there. Bye.